thanks everyone for uh, logging on to join us on this Facebook Live. Um, I'm an orthopedic foot and ankle surgeon. Um, and today we're going to be talking about the treatment and prevention of Achilles tendon injuries. And so I'm a member of Ortho Virginia. We're a large orthopedic specialty group all throughout the state of Virginia uh, with offices uh, in Lynchburg, Richmond, Virginia Beach, and the Northern Virginia area. And that's where I practice specifically in Alexandria and Springfield. Um, I uh, have been here for about a year. Uh, prior to that, I was fortunate enough to be uh, one of the team physicians for Mississippi State, which is where I went to college. Um, but uh, it is nice to be back in this area. I did do my uh, residency at Johns Hopkins, so I had been in the DMV uh, before. So um, at this point, uh, if you need more information about Ortho Virginia, please visit us at our website, orthovirginia.com. But let's get started with our topic today, and that's going to be preventing and treating Achilles tendon kind of injuries. And so if we just look a little bit, where does Achilles come from? Achilles was a character in uh, Homer's The Iliad, and he was the son of a king, the sea nymph, and to protect him, he was dipped in the river Styx, and, but he was killed by his heel, and that was the only area that was vulnerable on him for the story. And that actually is what led to his downfall, and hence the term the Achilles heel, because that was the only area of him that was not touched by the river. And so if we look at the anatomy of the Achilles tendon, what we're going to see is that it's really the contours or the joining of three separate tendons. And that's the tendon from the medial head of the gastrocnemius, the lateral head of the gastrocnemius, which are the more superficial muscles, and then the deep muscle, which is the soleus. And those three all join together and uh, form the Achilles tendon, which attaches those muscles into the heel bone and helps give a strength pushing down, uh, which is very important for going up and down stairs, for jumping and those sorts of things. Those muscles collectively, we usually call them just the calf muscles. And so uh, let's go on to the next slide. And so we're going to separate things into Achilles tendinosis and tendinitis and then Achilles tendon ruptures. And so first we're going to talk more about Achilles tendinosis and Achilles tendinitis. Sometimes those terms are used interchangeably, but Achilles tendinitis really refers more to acute inflammation. You know, which you would have more with an acute injury or acute increase in activity. So that's something that would happen over a few days, whereas tendinosis really refers more to degeneration of the tendon. And that's something that would occur more over weeks, months, or even up to a year. And so some of the causes for this are, are increasing activity. And what, what I mean by that is a sudden increase in activity. And so if you're someone who used to be very active and you've been out of activity for a while, and then try to get back in very quickly, that can often lead to tendonitis um, of the Achilles tendon. Improperly warming up or failing to stretch, uh, those things can be a cause as well. And a sudden increase in high impact activity. So even if you are uh, physically active, but then you go to a lot of things like box jumps, heavy squats, uh, stair climbing, etc., those things uh, can be a factor in causing uh, some Achilles tendonitis and if prolonged can then lead to tendinosis. And so if we look to the next slide, um, what are some of the symptoms that you all have? So most of it is going to be pain in the back of the leg, not really in the calf itself, that can be more of a muscle strain, but just below that, going in all the way down towards the heel. You can feel a sense of tightness, you can have swelling, and difficulty with pushing off or with coming up on your tiptoes. And these are the common things that you'll see when you have Achilles tendonitis uh, or an acute flare-up of, uh, of your Achilles tendon. So the next slide, please. So what can you do to prevent having Achilles tendonitis or to prevent that becoming Achilles tendinosis? Again, probably the most important thing is to remember to stretch and to remember to strengthen these muscles. So remembering to do this before and do this properly. When you're doing stretches, you don't want to be bouncing around. You want to have a nice, slow, even stretch uh, to that tendon. Make sure that you allow time to get warmed up prior to an activity. Most of these injuries and most of the tendonitis and uh, Achilles tendon ruptures actually occur in people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. People who have been active but now are, have jobs, have families, have other things that really kind of limit the amount of time that they have. You know, to do the activity of their choice. And so they're trying to cram a lot of activity into a small amount of time, and they often forget to do these things such as stretching and strengthening of so their Achilles tendon. Cross training is something that is very important for prevention. Cross training will help you to be able to do whatever activity you like to do even longer. And so 
when people come to me and they have a kid's tendonitis and they are a runner, I say, you know, if you're running five days a week, to really be able to keep doing that, it, you should consider cross training. So one or two of those days, you should, be, should consider either using a bike or doing swim for those days. And that will help you be able to do your activity of choice longer. Make sure to be aware of your environment uh, when you're having Achilles tendonitis or to help prevent Achilles tendonitis and tendonosis. And what really that means is you want to avoid a lot of hills. So if you're having issues with your Achilles tendon, uh, going up and down, especially up, is really going to fire up that Achilles tendon and make that pain and inflammation worse. Improper shoe wear can contribute to Achilles tendonitis. Uh, if you're a runner or an active person, uh, really a good rule of thumb is to change your shoes about every three months. If you get to where the heel counter or the back of the shoe is very worn and you have a, something hard pressing against the Achilles tendon, that can uh, contribute to your uh, Achilles tendon getting inflamed as well. And make sure that you increase your uh, exercise intensity slowly. If you try to ramp up activity very quickly, as we have discussed previously, you're, you're really just setting yourself up for injury. And so in terms of treatments, what things can we do? Um, we can play this video here. We'll start at the bottom and work up. And so, uh, this is a video of uh, shockwave therapy, and this is something that we offer here at Orca Virginia. Um, and what this is, is a treatment where we use a special machine uh, to do a shockwave on the Achilles tendon. And this is some excellent results uh, with helping to um, treat Achilles tendon, uh, Achilles tendonitis, and even Achilles tendinosis. Other things that you can do, um, dry needling is something that we offer through our physical therapy department. Um, formal physical therapy where you uh, focus on stretching and strengthening of the Achilles, but also on the mechanics of your running, uh, jumping, etc. Anti-inflammatory medications like ibuprofen and Aleve and even more stronger medications that we can prescribe for you. Cross, cross training we've uh, discussed previously as well. And that is important as you are getting back into exercise uh, after an Achilles tendon injury or a flare of Achilles tendonitis, icing your Achilles tendon and a period of rest and mobilization. Depending on how how severe your Achilles tendonitis is, that may include use of crutches or a short course of wearing a boot or something of that nature. So now we're going to move more to talking about Achilles tendon ruptures. Achilles tendon rupture, the Achilles tendon is one of the most common, if not the most common tendon that is ruptured in the human body. And uh, part of the reason for this is that there's an area about four to six centimeters from the insertion of the Achilles tendon that actually has a little bit of a watershed blood supply. And so what that means is that uh, the blood supply in that area is more of a trickle-down effect, and that causes it to be the most common location that Achilles tendon ruptures occur. Now, things that put you at risk for having Achilles tendon rupture are being a weekend border. And we talked about that a little bit, but we didn't really define it, and that's uh, someone in their 30s, 40s, again, who is trying to stay active, be fit, but is not doing it on a consistent basis. And so they're really not consistently stretching, warming up, and uh, consistently using their muscles and trying to push themselves quickly over a short period of time. Achilles tendon ruptures are more common in men than in women. Uh, and certain antibiotics uh, can make you more prone to Achilles tendon rupture. Uh, those antibiotics are called fluoroquinolones. That is a class of medication. And some common medications in that class are Cipro or Levaquin. Um, so it's important that if you're on an antibiotic that you talk to your physician about what things are appropriate for you in terms of exercise while you're on that antibiotic. Steroid injections can make you more prone to uh, Achilles tendon ruptures as well. And uh, if you are having any Achilles tendonitis, I do not recommend doing any steroid injections at the site of the Achilles tendon. That just makes you very prone to having an Achilles tendon rupture. It may feel really good for a short period of time, but then you may take some tendinosis or tendinitis and actually advance that to Achilles tendon rupture. Achilles tendon ruptures are almost always associated with a sensation of a large pop, and people often describe a large sound. And this will usually occur when they go to push off strongly. So if they're playing uh, basketball, which is a common mechanism, they're going up for a rebound, or they go to push off to cross someone over and they feel a, and hear a large pop and people often tell me they thought that someone uh, threw a, a rock at them, uh, hit them in the back with a bat, uh, they thought someone shot a gun and they feel this large pop and they look behind them and no one was there. So it's, it is most usually a non-contact injury. And so 
when we see a patient who's had an Achilles tendon rupture in clinic, this is one of the things that I look for. And what you're seeing on the right side, the image on the right is a normal Achilles tendon. The image on the left is a patient with Achilles tendon rupture. And what you see on the image on the right is that the Achilles tendon has a normal tension to it, which is causing the toes to go up towards the top of the screen. In the image on the left, you can see that that patient has lost that normal tension band effect, and they have more of a 90 degree angle at their foot because their Achilles tendon is no longer in continuity. And so if we look at the next slide, we can actually see a video of what this looks like in well, on a patient. This is someone on the left again who has had an Achilles tendon rupture. If you see, I'm gonna squeeze the calf here. And as I squeeze the calf, there's no motion of the foot. And the foot's at really a 90 degree angle. And the reason that that occurs is because the Achilles tendon is not in continuity uh, all the way through and it's not connected to the heel anymore. But if you look at the video on the right, this is after an Achilles tendon repair on the same patient. And as I squeeze the, as I squeeze the calf muscle, it actually pulls on the Achilles tendon, which causes the toes to uh, plantar flexure and the sense to go towards the top of the screen. And so you can see the difference between the ruptured state and the repaired state. This, uh, on this slide, we're looking at an MRI of an Achilles tendon rupture. So on the on the left is a normal Achilles tendon, and you can see it looks like a nice thin black line all the way through, and that looks like a healthy tendon um, going all the way down uh, towards the bottom where it inserts into the heel bone or the calcaneus. On the right, you can see uh, the two uh, black areas of the tendon that are uh, pointed out on the picture that show the Achilles tendon with the white in between being where the rupture is, and that white fluid or edema just denotes that there's rupture and discontinuity to the Achilles tendon. Now, if you suspect that you've had an Achilles tendon rupture, it's important to get in to see, uh, to see us as quick as possible. Don't wait or delay for an MRI because that can often cause a delay in treatment, which can uh, change what we have to do in terms of the treatment for your injury. So if we go on to the next slide, um, so these are, were really the main stage of treatment. So in the early 90s, uh, there was a study that was published looking at operative versus non-operative treatment for Achilles tendon ruptures. And for non-operative treatment, patients were placed into a cast for about one month and then slowly progressed out of the cast. And for surgery, patients had an open repair. And you can see the large incision here. This is more of a large incision open repair. And what they found in that study was that the Open repair was superior to non-operative treatment in terms of decreased rates of re-rupture, decreased pain, and improved strength. The non-operative treatment was superior in terms of there were no surgical complications because there was no surgery, and there were no wound complications. And so one thing to note with uh, Achilles tendon surgery is that wound complications can be a very uh, severe complication. And so it, it's definitely something to be aware of. Now, if we go to the next slide, in the early 2000s, early to mid 2000s, people start to look again at non-operative treatment and they start to look at something called accelerated rehabilitation. And so instead of a prolonged period of casting, more of a short period of immobilization, it was followed then by very intense physical therapy. Uh, the Achilles tendon strength is closely monitored and very slowly the range of motion is increased. And so we start essentially with a very large large wedge you can think of it almost like walking on a uh, high heel shoe and then over time we bring that wedge down come from more of an angle like this until we get the foot more flat and with accelerate rehabilitation protocols people have actually been able to have good and excellent results almost equivalent to almost equivalent in some cases equivalent to surgical intervention but this comes with a lot of caveats and some of those caveats are uh, patients who have a delay in presentation over 24 hours uh, are often not candidates for accelerated rehabilitation. Um, if there's a gapping in the tendon, uh, you may not be a candidate for accelerated, accelerated rehabilitation. And if for whatever reason, you are not going to be able to participate in the accelerated rehabilitation, if it's not going to be possible for you to go to a therapy two to three times a week, then surgical intervention may be a better option for you in those instances. And so, Accelerated rehabilit rehabilitation, while it can give you an excellent result, there are a lot of factors that have to be considered for that to be an appropriate treatment. The really great thing about acceler accelerated rehabilitation is that there are no risks of surgical complications. There are no risks of some of those more uh, devastating or possibly devastating uh, wound complications. And so if we look at the next slide, 
One note before we look at the minimally invasive repair slide, it does show a minimally invasive repair. So if you would prefer not to see it, avert your eyes temporarily. Thank you. And so this is more of the minimally invasive approach. And so it's a much smaller incision. And as you can see in the image on the far right, what we do is use an instrument to grab the Achilles tendon. And using that instrument, we place sutures through the tendon. And then we flip the instrument and put the uh, instrument into the uh, piece of the tendon down by the heel and put sutures through that and then pull them out through the incision and tie the tendon together and do our repair in that manner. And we can go on to the next slide. And now you, here you can see that that minimally invasive incision is much smaller than that more open incision. And that's how I do almost all of my Achilles tendon repairs at this time is using a minimally invasive approach. By using a minimally invasive approach, you actually decrease uh, the rate of wound healing complications because obviously your wound is much smaller. Um, but at the same time, you can get that tendon repaired. There are some large uh, studies that looked at what is the best treatment now that we've had uh, this resurgence of accelerated rehabilitation and um, uh, this more advent of more mentally invasive techniques. And really what they found and what I do at, uh, what I do for Cliffs and Rutgers now is a minimally invasive surgery coupled with accelerated re rehabilitation. And so this is my general treatment algorithm. Now, not everyone is going to fit into this treatment algorithm. This is just in general, the way that I approach this. And so if someone has an Achilles tendon rupture, and they're seeing less than 24 hours from the injury, and I can get them into a plantar flux uh, cast or splint. If the rupture's in the mid-substance of the uh, tendon and they're able to comply, then they are a candidate for accelerated rehabilitation. And I think they can get an excellent result. If someone presents light from their injury, or if they have a tear, uh, an insertional tear, and we didn't really talk about that, but what that means is a tear directly off of the calcaneus or the heel bone, those all, I think, are best treated with surgery. And so, in conclusion, Achilles tendon injury prevention, probably the number one thing to do is to remember to have appropriate stretching and strengthening of your Achilles. Slowly increase your activity. If you are coming back from an injury, from a pregnancy, from a move, if there's been some life event that has kept you out of your normal activity, don't try to get back to that exact, exact same level, level on day one. Take your time and build back up to that. In terms of treatments for Achilles tendinosis and tendinitis, anti-inflammatory medications, um, uh, physical therapy, uh, rest, dry needle and chocolate, all those modalities can be very helpful in getting you excellent results with your Achilles tendon injury. And for Achilles tendon ruptures, surgical and non-surgical options can both give you an excellent result. And you want to make sure that you have a treatment that's tailored uh, to you, the individual patient. And so, I really appreciate everyone tuning in and listening to our talk today. At this point, I'd be happy to take any questions. And again, if uh, you would like to get some more information about us, please visit us at orthovirginia.com. Thank you so much. We do have some questions coming in. So someone asks, if they are having a Kelly's tendonitis, will going to a running store and getting fitted for shoes help? So it may help. It may not. The If you have Achilles tendonitis, the problem is often starting above the shoe itself. So unless you're wearing a high top shoe that's really controlling your ankle motion, you may not be doing much to really prevent or treat that Achilles tendonitis. Um, obviously, running shoes are not usually high top shoes, and so that may not make much of a change for you. Now, if your current shoes have a really tight heel panel, that is something that you may, able, may be able to change and that a running store may be able to help you with. Thank you. Does PRP help with the tendonitis? PRP, so PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. And what we do with that is we draw your own blood and then we use a centrifuge, we spin it down, and we concentrate some of the normal healing factors that are in your blood and inject it back into a site of injury to help with um, uh, tendonitis or arthritis or other pains. For plantar fasciitis, for knee osteoarthritis, uh, and for some other tendonitis issues, uh, platelet-rich plasma or PRP has excellent results that have been studied well. 
for Achilles tendonitis, it does not have excellent results that have been well studied. And so I do not recommend that for Achilles tendonitis or tendinosis. Thank you. Can you please comment on the Graston technique compared to dry needling? So Graston technique is more of a direct pressure technique um, where pressure is placed directly on the tendon. Dry needling is where we use small needles, more similar to acupuncture, that actually go through and penetrate the skin um, in order to incite that healing response. Thank you. Are, are orthotics appropriate for tendonitis? Orthotics, again, may help out with certain tendonitis issues. Um, for Achilles tendonitis, really something very simple as a heel cup, which will pad the most the very end of the Achilles tendon, right where it inserts into the heel, but will also lift your heel just slightly in order to take some of the tension off the Achilles tendon. I think that's really the way to go. You can spend a lot of money to get some pricey orthotics, but if you're having Achilles tendon issues, by simply giving a small lift to the, to the heel with a heel cup, I think you may get some significant relief. Thank you. How serious is Achilles tendonitis? Is having Achilles tendonitis likely to mean that you're going to have a rupture soon? Achilles tendonitis has a large variance in terms of how severe it is. There are people who have very mild symptoms where it's only symptomatic when they are extremely active. And there are people who are almost debilitated by it in terms of the amount of pain that they have, even with simple things as standing and walking. And so the treatment really is varied as well and tailored to each individual patient depending on the amount of symptoms that you have. Um, in terms of does that mean if you have Achilles tendonitis, does that mean that you are going to have an Achilles tendon rupture? Tendonitis itself I do not think means that you are going to have an Achilles tendon rupture. If you have long-standing tendonitis and that develops into tendinosis where you have thickening and degeneration of the tendon, there is a school of thought that that thinks that tendinosis is a predecessor to tendon rupture, okay? So if you are having long-standing pain that is hurting with simple activities such as standing and walking, then you may be more prone to an Achilles tendon rupture. That is possible. Thank you. If you I, may add, I may add to that it is possible, but we don't have anything that proves that, I will say that. Thank you. If you feel like you had a rupture a month or so ago, how do you know or confirm? Do you go for an MRI? I think you need to come in and see someone as quickly as possible if you think you had it a month ago, because you may still be a candidate for a repair. But if you've been walking on it for a month, what happens is the edges of those tendons are pulled apart from each other. and the tendon may heal with scar tissue across it, but it may heal at an improper length. And what that will cause is decreased strength with pushing off, and you may be more prone to actually a re -rupture. Thank you. Are stiff or flexible running shoes better for Achilles tendonitis? I don't think that stiff or flexible running shoes in particular are going to affect Achilles tendonitis per se. Um, I, again, I think that it has more to do with, well, I guess if we are talking about, if we're talking about the sole of the shoe, I don't think it's going to make as much of a difference. If we're talking about the heel of the shoe, then I think a softer heel will actually lead to less tendonitis. Um, so I do think that a softer heel may be better. I do think what's more important, however, is probably your running surface. And so if you're doing a lot of stairs, a lot of inclines, I think that's more of a potential trigger for toes tendonitis. Thank you. How helpful is a nighttime brace in helping an Achilles tendon heal? So nighttime brace in general, we use that a lot for plantar fasciitis to, in order to stretch plantar fasciitis um, throughout the night, but you can also use it for Achilles tendonitis. I think that's an excellent treatment. I think it's uh, a very reasonable adjunct to the other treatments that we described. Um, it may not give you complete relief by itself, but it's certainly something that's worth trying because if you're stretching the plantar fasciitis, you'll also be stretching um, 
Well, that brace that would stretch the front crash axle will also, also stretch the Achilles tendon as well. Thank you. In the first week or two after an Achilles tendon tears, do anti-inflammatories help the healing process or only help with the pain? After Achilles tendon rupture, so just to clarify the question, after Achilles tendon rupture, do anti-inflammatories help with the healing process? Is that correct? Correct. Probably in the first couple of weeks, they're mainly helping with pain. And so helping to decrease some of the pain and the inflammation in that area in the first couple of weeks. Thank you. I have limited range of motion after a total ankle replacement over a decade ago. What can I do for my Achilles and heel pain? That's really tricky because there's many, many different issues that may be causing that limited range of motion. You could have arthrofibrosis, which would be scarring around the ankle replacement. You could have limited motion because of tightness of the Achilles tendon. You could have limited motion because of uh, subtalar arthritis. And so there's a lot of different things that may be causing that. And so if you had an ankle replacement, you have limited range of motion, I think getting evaluated to see what the potential causes are or to have a more firm understanding of what the actual cause is, I think it would be very important for you. Thank you. Do you recommend Voltaren gel for Achilles tendonitis? I think Voltaren gel is excellent. Voltaren gel is an anti-inflammatory gel, so it works much like ibuprofen or Aleve. For patients who have uh, gastritis, stomach ulcers, um, things of that nature, Voltaren gel is not absorbed through the stomach. And so it's uh, directly applied to the area of concern. And so that can help especially patients that have those sorts of issues. So I do recommend Voltaren gel uh, to lots of my patients who have any issues with uh, taking anti-inflammatories by mouth. Thank you. Someone says that they've had two years of treatment for chronic, chronic Achilles tendinosis, including physical therapy, PRP, and dry needling. They still wake up with pain and swelling in their ankles every morning. And is there anything you can recommend so that they can get better sleep? Absolutely. I think there are other things that can be done in terms of treatments. I think that you could try shockwave therapy. Um, that's not a first-line therapy for me. I know we talked about that first, but that's not really a first-line therapy. If you've been having pain for two years, however, I think that is a reasonable uh, thing to try. I'm not sure if you mentioned dry needling or not, but that could be um, a treatment for you if you have not tried that. Um, and we didn't really talk about this in our discussion. Uh, but for people who have tendinosis, who go on to Achilles tendinosis, that does not get better with conservative therapies, there is surgery that can be done to repair that tendinosis as well. Thank you. Do you have suggestions for Achilles tendinitis from taking Cipro? For Achilles tendinitis from taking Cipro, the biggest thing is immobilization. And so if you have been on Cipro and you immediately are developing tendinos, tendinitis, inflammation of your Achilles tendon, pain in the Achilles tendon, I recommend to get into a boot quickly so that you do not go on to Achilles tendon rupture. Thank you. A couple of questions about the Achilles tendon rupture, which is how soon do you have surgery after you've ruptured it? And how long does the recovery take? Okay. Uh, those two very good questions. For Achilles tendon ruptures, I try to get people, if we decide that surgery is right for you, um, I try to get people to the operating room as soon as I can. And so less than a week is ideal, but I have done it, you know, much further out than that. The sooner you can get to that Achilles tendon repair, the easier it is to return, return it to normal tension and normal, um, uh, return that muscular tendon unit to a normal, uh, position. And then the second question was, what is the rehab? My rehab protocol for Achilles tendon ruptures is actually the exact same as the non-operative protocol. And so uh, the first two weeks are totally non-weight bearing, not putting any pressure on it at all. And then that's followed by four weeks of partial weight bearing, building up to putting all your weight on it at six weeks. At six weeks, you're in a boot with a heel lift and those heel lifts uh, again, it starts out as a pie wedge, and so it's built up kind of like a high heel. And then we start to take slices of that 
cut a wedge out until we bring your foot down flat. In terms of what is the recovery for this, unfortunately, this is a, an injury that has a fairly long recovery. And so even for professional athletes, um, and many of them have had this, uh, Kobe Bryant had coach and rupture, David Beckham, uh, the list goes on and on. It's probably about a full year for people to get back to their full level of function after an Achilles tendon rupture. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't walk normally or that you can't drive a car before then. You can do many of these things well before then at a much shorter time frame. But to get back, if you are, um, but this injury usually occurs for people who are playing sports and who are trying to be active. To get back to that usual level of activity normally it takes longer time. All right, one final question, which is, if you think that you have an Achilles tendon issue, who should you be calling? Should they be looking for foot and ankle, sports medicine? Well, you know, well, I think you should call Ortho Virginia, obviously. And so I think um, this is something that falls under a couple of different umbrellas. Obviously, uh, orthopedic foot and ankle surgeons, such as myself, uh, sports medicine surgeons, a lot of them will treat these uh, injuries. And so uh, I'd be happy to help take care of you here at, at North Virginia. Thank you so much. That is all we have time for today. If we were unable to answer your question that came in during the live, we will answer it later in the comments. Would you like to close? Well, I just want to say thank you very much to everyone for tuning in. I hope you have a great afternoon and um, please visit us at orthovirginia.com.